How is it going everybody? You're watching the Nabal Tech and Apple has just released its latest update to iOS 16, iOS 16.1. That's right, it's finally here, the first major software update to iOS 16. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know. So let's talk about all of the new features and changes all of the bug fixes, security updates, and of course, let's also talk about performance and maybe most importantly, let's talk about battery life because as you know, iOS 16 is full of battery bugs, issues, problems, battery drain, overheating, and the list goes on and on. So we're gonna talk about that as well. And without further ado, let's begin. So the first change I wanna talk about actually has to do with the battery indicator right here because now in iOS 16.1, Apple actually made the new battery indicator with the percentage available to all iPhones with Face ID. So before iOS 16.1, the iPhones 11, 10R, 12 mini and 13 mini didn't have the feature where you could see the percentage right here on the battery indicator. Now it's available on all iPhone models. So iPhone 11, 10R, 12 mini and 13 mini now have this feature right here as well. All you have to do is go to your settings, scroll down to battery and then battery percentage, enable that and then you have the number everywhere on your iPhone, super handy. And still talking about the battery icon and the battery percentage right here, Apple has updated the icon in iOS 16.1 and now it's dynamic. So as you can see here, it'll represent much better how full the battery is by becoming a little bit darker and lighter. It's easier to see by looking at it instead of just relying on the number. If you don't really remember how it was, let me show you. This is a screenshot I took on iOS 16.0.3 and before, as you can see, it was completely filled. So you had to rely on the number and not on the icon itself. So as you can see, much better now, much better represented. We have many more new features in iOS 16.1. Like for example, if you tap on settings and you scroll down and you can keep scrolling, keep scrolling until you see your photos. Now we have shared library. So now finally, Apple made this feature available, which was supposed to be released alongside iOS 16, but it's now here in 16.1. It was a little bit delayed, but it's finally here. And with this feature, you can literally share an entire library with somebody else, actually with up to five people. I've just created this example here. And as you can see, you can add participants and you have a ton of customization and settings that you can play with. Well, let me show you how it actually looks like. So then if you have the feature enabled, every time you bring up the camera, for example, you have the icon right here where you can simply tap on shared library and then this photo that I take right here will go straight to my shared library, meaning that all of my other participants will have access to this photo or video. If I tap here once again, it'll say personal library, so then only I will be able to check on my personal library. It's a really, really cool feature. On top of that, if you tap on your photos, for example, you can easily see by the icon right there that you can tap on it and then you can switch between personal library and shared library. And then if you tap on shared library, at the time I have nothing here, but as soon as I take photos and all, it will be right here. And then you can even see both libraries as well if you want you. So then very, very nice feature because now you don't really need to create a shared album and share with somebody. You can share an entire library. Very cool with a ton of customization. I really like this feature. Now let's talk about live activities because as you know, Apple introduced this feature in iOS 16 where let me give you an example. You can, for example, follow a live score of a game from your lock screen and this is updated live. So this is really, really cool way to check live activities as the name suggests. But now in iOS 16.1, this feature is brought to the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max 
to the dynamic island. So then you'll be able to check a live score, for example, straight from your dynamic island without having to go to your lock screen. So then it'll be always there at the top being updated live. And then of course the dynamic island is this part right here. Of course, this feature is exclusive to the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. I couldn't create here an example to show you because the feature is just getting started, but it'll be very, very cool. Now let's talk about Fitness Plus the service, the workout service from Apple. And the cool thing in iOS 16.1 is that you can actually use Fitness Plus even if you don't have an Apple Watch. So now it'll be available for everyone even without an Apple Watch. I'm not a subscriber to Fitness Plus, but now everyone can use it just with their iPhones, very, very cool. We have new features in the wallet as well. So if I open up my wallet, now we have two new features that are very, very cool. If you have keys on your wallet, like for example, a hotel room key or your car key, you can easily share that key via iMessage. So very, very cool way to actually share your keys with other people. And also if you use Apple Pay Cash, now we have a savings account. So then if you have any money here on your Apple Pay Cash and you enable the savings account feature, you'll have interest on that money. So then the money won't stay there like standing still, you'll actually make money on it. Very cool. We have new features in the home app as well. As you can see, I don't really use the home app, but if you do use it and if you use any actually electronic device or gadget that uses the matter standard now it's compatible with home so then you can use any device with the matter standard and include on your environment and use it through the home app we have a little tweak here in the books app as well and as you can see here as you're reading something using the books app it'll just hide all of your controls so then you have this full experience full immersive look with just stacks, no buttons or nothing like that. If you want to control anything, tap anywhere and then you see the controls and then you can easily control it. But that's how it looks now. Now let's talk about bug fixes because we have three big ones. So then in the messages app, there was a pretty annoying bug where even after you delete some message like that, the whole conversation would just come back. So then you deleted it and after a while, it'll just come back. Now that's fixed, you don't have that anymore. As soon as you delete it, it actually goes away and it doesn't come back. Another bug is related to the dynamic island and it would happen when you actually use reachability. So then the dynamic island would become unavailable. It just would disappear sometimes. It was weird, now it's fully working. And as I tap on the dynamic island, it works perfectly even while using the reachability feature it's now back to normal and last but not least carplay so if you were using carplay while using a vpn sometimes it would just fail it wouldn't connect it was a bug now it's fixed as well so you can use carplay even while connected to a VPN. Now let's talk a little bit about performance, which wasn't an issue. I wasn't having any problems with performance in iOS 16.0.3. I haven't seen any problems either. And I can tell you that performance will be very similar to previous versions. So then smoothness, speed, uh, everything will be very, very similar. And this wasn't really addressed in iOS 16.1, but there is something very, very big and very, very important that was addressed in 16.1, and it's the battery. That's right, guys. Great news. Apple has actually worked on the battery in iOS 16.1 in the software update. So let's go ahead and open up the battery section to talk about battery in iOS 16.1. And I can tell you that, yes, it's better. Overheating is less common, is less often. Same thing with battery drain. I haven't seen battery drain and I've been using iOS 16.1 on all the beta versions. So I've been using it for a while now, for weeks and weeks. Same thing with battery issues in general and battery life has improved dramatically, especially on the previous versions, on the previous beta versions, especially right now in the official version of iOS 16.1. So excellent news. And it gets better than that because it wasn't just me. 
I've reading a ton of comments from you guys right here on YouTube, on previous videos, and especially on Instagram as well, and a lot of people are having the same experience as I'm having better battery as a whole after updating to iOS 16.1. So excellent news. Of course, this isn't necessarily a fix. This isn't a final fix, but it's a great improvement and I'm very happy with that. And I hope that after you update, you also get better results. So that's it. That's literally it. So my recommendation is pretty obvious at this point, which is if you were on iOS 16, do update right now as soon as you can. We have a ton of new features, bug fixes, and battery is better, guys. Trust me, you'll have a better experience overall. All right? So that's it, and I'll see you on the next video as usual. Bye-bye, guys.